I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. I'm at the powder magazine here at the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association. I just picked up three pounds of GoX 3F powder here. This is the newly delivered from the first publicly available shipment GoX powder here. It made its first appearance at the NMLRA National Championship here as we've been talking about this being a possibility here for the past couple weeks. Um, it made it in on Friday before the big national shoot here. It came in about midday and they're brought in, uh, according to some estimates that I've heard, about 1,800 pounds with more going to a, a local distributor here that the NMLRA works with. The NMLRA has priced it at $24 a pound. Uh, that's not necessarily a standard set. So we don't know what other distributors across the country are gonna price the powder at. But right now at the NMLRA, it's $24 a pound. It's a few bucks more than GoX was uh, years earlier when it was available, but that doesn't seem to be affecting sales or reception to the relaunch, at least here. I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with Carl from Estes Energetics here to answer some of your questions about the comeback of GoX. I'll save you a little time if you're here just to find out when GoX will be arriving at other distributors other than what we saw at the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association here in September 2023. CEO Carl Culling said that the, uh, yeah, that the GoX black powder plant will be fulfilling distributor orders and is actively fulfilling distributor orders right now and that they hope to have those orders filled and completed, meaning black powder, GoX black powder is at every distributor in the GoX network by the end of the year. There's a lot to unpack here, so I've got timestamps for the questions and answers in the video description as well as with the full article at ilovemuzzleloading.com. One of the most frequent questions that has been asked since the GoX acquisition from Estes Energetics is what kind of changes have been made both to the facility and the company, as well as the powder itself. When I asked what kind of changes have happened under Estes Energetics after acquiring the GoX black powder plant here, Carl mentioned that there are three pillars to how Estes is running the GoX black powder plant. Safety, quality, and efficiency. First up, in regards to safety, Carl mentioned that a new state-of-the-art fire suppression system has been added to the GoX black powder plant. It's no secret that the GoX brand has had its share of issues with fires in its 100 year history. Carl went on to mention that the new fire suppression system uses infrared and optical sensors to detect a fire and drops a quote, incredible amount of water onto the area where the system may detect a fire or some kind of explosion before it has a chance to really expand. Safety is more than fire suppression though at a black powder plant and Carl mentioned that with nearly double the staff now at the GoX black powder plant as it has seen previously under previous management that safety and training really started before black powder production even began uh, with the training and kind of education of new and returning staff members. When speaking about staff, Carl mentioned that a new position has been added to the GoX black powder plant here in Louisiana. One of the first hires that Estes Energetics made after the paperwork and the finalization of the sale of the GoX plant went through was the hiring of an experienced quality manager. This is a dedicated staff member that focuses on the quality of GoX black powder from start to finish. That's their only job. <laughs> That's it. From, from start to finish is making sure that the product coming out of the plant is as good as it can be. One of my primary questions for Carl and the same question that many of you have and still have really until GoX is, is more widely distributed here is have there been any changes to the GoX black powder formula. Quote, our goal from start to finish was to make the same powder. New production GoX is about as chemically similar to old production GoX as you can get. It's even made with the same elements on the same machines. Carl went on to note that due to the condition of the GoX black powder plant when Estes Energetics acquired it, that some parts on certain machines have been replaced or updated but in large part, the GoX black powder is being made in the exact same conditions as it has been for years now. Now, I know what you're thinking. This guy runs GoX. Of course, he's going to say that it's the exact same GoX. You know, how do we know that this is the case? But I want to say it's been about two weeks now since we got the first release of GoX. Um, even at the NMLRA National Championships, uh, in mid-September, we had shooters on the line shooting with GoX, and some of the first reports that I heard out of this new powder was that it was grouping the same and it was performing 
near identically to old Go X. And these are from some of the most pressured shooters uh, that are shooting for <laughs> as much as they can, as, as well as they can. They were seeing a similar performance between the new and the old production Go X. Now, even since that September National Championships with the NMLRA, we have people at their home ranges with a variety of their muzzleloaders reporting on the forums and reporting on Facebook groups that they are taking muzzleloaders tuned up for hunting, uh, preparing for the 2023 hunting season here, comparing muzzleloaders that are chronographed and set up to shoot old Go X, trying the new Go X, and they're seeing identical performance out of it. They're not having to change their load. They're not having to change anything about their setup when shifting from a can of old production Go X and a can of new production Go X. Uh, I know that this doesn't put that you know, doesn't put the discussion about this to rest, and it's not a large enough pool yet for many of us to say that it's a done deal. And I'm not by any means saying that, but right now it is trending towards that, in my opinion, based on what we're seeing out of the people that are shooting and testing this powder. I know a full breakdown and test is something that everybody wants, and I fully expect that we'll see a variety of tests being done this fall because this is such a hot button question. I have a, a much better chronograph. I have a lab radar on the way, uh, and I have a variety of lots of old GoX black powder and, and, and a, several pounds of the new production GoX black powder. I'm excited to get it on the range and do some detailed testing with it later this fall. I don't know about you, but for me, the government contract side of American made black powder and really the black powder industry in general has always been a big question out there. We don't have a whole lot of publicly available information uh, or haven't, I should say, in the past as far as, you know, we know that the US government is a large customer, probably the largest customer really for American made black powder here. But one of the big questions coming into the SS Energetics uh, purchase of GoX black powder was a rather large investment from the Department of Defense that came in alongside the SS Energetics money and purchase to get the plant back online. So I wanted to be sure to ask Carl as many questions as I could about the government involvement with the plant here. I understand that this isn't going to be as comprehensive as many of you are looking for, but uh, if you can, trust me that I, I asked as many questions as I could, and I do appreciate Carl um, letting me know what he could and couldn't answer in regards to this. So I hope that this next part is a little bit informative if you're curious about this like I am. According to Carl and other representatives from GoX Black Powder here, much of the US Department of Defense or the US government involvement with the GoX black powder plant is under Title III of the Defense Production Act. A short overview of that to my limited understanding here is Title I says that you must meet a production timeline for US military Department of Defense ordering. Title III allocates funds to invest in critical domestic production. Title III was explained to me as funding with the exclusive goal of making production viable. In the case of the GoX black powder plant, the Title III funding that we saw go through earlier this year was not to babysit or run the GoX black powder plant, but to expedite the rebuilding of machinery and equipment and just the general infrastructure at the GoX plant. To quote Carl here, Title III is a cost share. The DOD retains partial ownership of select pieces of equipment, but the plant is not federally owned. As our discussion relating to the government involvement with GoX continued, Carl and I were able to get into some of the reasons why the DOD is so interested in the GoX black powder plant and seeing it continue and possibly improved over what it has been. Production and manufacturing in the defense space was at an all-time high during the Cold War, but as the Cold War ended, we retained large stores of military materials and components to make those materials. With those stores, production began to slow, but with several ongoing contemporary conflicts, there's an increased interest in increasing that DOD-related production and creating an ultra-domestic supply chain. Aligning with this way of thinking, Estes Energetics has just passed a lab-scale test and will be moving forward with their own production facility to produce their own potassium nitrate for GoX black powder and other Estes Energetics needs right here in the United States with potassium nitrate sourced 
from U.S. mines. This means that all of the required potassium nitrate for GoX black powder will be sourced from the United States, and it will be refined in a GoX or an Estes Energetics facility here in the United States. Carl went on to say that the desire for domestic supply chains for these materials would spread to other aspects of the business, but couldn't elaborate until those items solidified. He did say, however, that if you're interested in this kind of thing, and maybe you're interested in speculating a little bit, Carl himself has given several presentations that are publicly available online that might provide some more information about some of the things that GoX might be looking at doing, or Estes Energetics, I should say, might be doing in the future. Carl wouldn't mention the exact dollar amount that Estes themselves has put into investing into the Minden facility here for GoX Black Powder, but he did say, quote, it was a lot of money. So we've talked a lot about the government involvement in getting GoX back online, but how much involvement does the government have on day-to-day -day production? We all know that the government orders for military powder are going to take priority over muzzleloading enthusiast orders, but I was able to get some more concrete information um, about that and how that works. Mr. Colling mentioned that obviously the military orders are a large aspect of their business here, but with the new GoX production capacity that the military orders aren't difficult to fulfill. Mr. Colling couldn't speak to specifics to the military orders, but he did share two key pieces of information that I wanted to pass on to you. The first here being that the military orders are quick to produce. According to Colling, the military orders contain a much smaller range of granulations of black powder than the consumer market, which is typically five to six different granulations. The second here is that there is a plethora of publicly available information about the amount of powder that is being ordered and the munitions that are being ordered by the federal government and the Department of Defense, all available online because this is being bought with taxpayer money, with your money. Um, much of this information has to be made public. It's just not you know, the big flashy headline news story. Quote, just this week, two large orders of 155 millimeter artillery rounds were approved and publicly announced. For those interested, I found it relatively easy to find the source material for these orders by looking at some of the military spending or the ammunitions ordering related headlines that you can find online, both in the US as well as in Europe. So the big question here is, does the GoX facility have enough capacity to satisfy both the US military orders and the muzzleloading enthusiast, you know, kind of sporting powder consumer orders? It might seem like a silly question, but I wanted to get down to brass tacks as much as I could here. The worry behind this question is that the military could come in and just order all of the GoX black powder capacity for an entire year, and muzzleloading enthusiasts that are fans of GoX would be just left out in the cold as far as getting GoX black powder. Not that other powder wouldn't be available, but in this kind of wartime period that we're in here a little bit, uh, this is, seems like a relevant question. Carl wouldn't go into specifics as to how much powder GoX could produce now that they're back up and running, but he did mention that GoX has produced tens of thousands of pounds of black powder to fulfill both military orders as well as the civilian sporting grade orders here that will begin to be fulfilled this fall. Quote, military production is very important to us. When the military submits an order, they don't dictate what priority an order takes in our production, but they do set a deadline. We have to hit that delivery date, but we can choose where that production fits in our facility. So tying back into what we were talking about a little bit here earlier, the military places an order just like a distributor would, and I'm not saying that there's not a different hierarchy here, but just for the sake of this explanation, the military places an order GoX doesn't have to drop everything that they're doing that instant for, to fulfill that order. They can schedule that order in their production process so that it's the most efficient for them. So while those military orders do need to get shipped out when they need to get shipped out, it's not necessarily the case that everything for the consumer side of things is just casted off to the side as second nature. Now, that can obviously still happen, I suppose. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but that's just what I've heard here. So the primary question of, of many of you who maybe don't care a whole lot about kind of the, the backstory and the information that we've been sharing about the government involvement here is when will GoX Black Powder be available at my distributor? Carl did say that he believes every distributor in the GoX network has placed GoX Black Powder orders and that the GoX Black Powder plant is actively fulfilling them as of early September. So 
the order to the National Muzzling Rifle Association and, and the distributor that supplies them was just one of those orders. Um, GoX is actively targeting those large events right now. The next two key events for GoX, according to Mr. Culling here, are the NSSA fall shoot that's coming up here in October, and then they're gonna be heavily targeting Pennsylvania for their muzzleloading seasons because Pennsylvania is such a dynamic muzzleloading season. It has gotten their attention and they're working on actively fulfilling distributor orders in Pennsylvania as a priority after the NSSA. Alongside that, if you're not involved in the NSSA or you're not in the Pennsylvania or you don't hunt in Pennsylvania, the rest of the distributor orders that have been placed are actively being fulfilled right now. And Carl said that they should be fulfilled by the end of the year. When speaking to that, I think it's only fair to bring up that the timelines for GoX production have shifted since Estes Energetics took over. Things have happened, issues have come up, and uh, the timeline for when we get GoX has shifted. I'm thankful that we're seeing it here in 2023. I was getting a little nervous, guys. Uh, but so, you know, timelines are timelines. It's, it's nothing concrete, but I think this is a little bit different now compared to before GoX was being produced here because it is being actively produced. So I hate to say it guys, but I think it is still just a little bit more of a waiting game for many of us that are wanting to pick up some of this new production GoX block powder. And for that reason, I'm not really calling this case closed. It's not really the end of this, you know, GoX block powder saga as it has been for the past couple of years. I'm gonna really wait to kind of officially close this story until we know and we see that GoX is with all of the distributors here. So uh, don't take this as, as me, you know, waving the flag and saying victory here. We're gonna keep an eye on this and keep reporting on it as we see black powder roll out from the GoX plant. Along with the you know, normal GoX black powder rollout here, one of the primary questions that Mr. Culling has been facing here is when will we see the return of old Einsford or old E uh, black powder? Old Einsford was introduced um, by GoX to uh, kind of compete with the upper tier level powder coming uh, from Swiss black powder, really. They're, they're, they're pretty candid about that. Everybody kind of knows that. According to Mr. Culling here, because they are fulfilling distributor orders right now for regular GoX, we won't likely see uh, Old Einsford until the first quarter of 2024, which kind of tracks for what we've been hearing out of GoX and Estes Energetics here. They said for a while that the primary goal was to get regular GoX up and going and that Old Einsford would come back later. So we're going to be waiting a little bit more to see Old E come back here. But by the time spring rolls around, we start getting the competition and the, the living history season and the event season for 2024. Hopefully, we'll have some old Einsford on the shelves and, uh, and available to go through the competitive season. We mentioned and we were on the grounds with the first arrival of, of the new production GoX at the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association's national championships here this fall. So I thought it was only right and it was, it was a request from many of you to ask this of Mr. Culling and, and GoX and Estes in general, you know, GoX and Estes have been very active with the NMLRA really since Estes took over. Many of you have seen the GoX ads in Muzzle Blast magazine. They've sponsored several, you know, events and spaces and things at NMLRA events and shoots. Uh, I asked really straight up here, you know, you've worked a lot with the NMLRA uh, over the past couple of years. Will you be reaching out more into the community, working with other associations, with other clubs, and doing any kind of sponsorship with the community. It's a real sore spot for many of us when it comes to GoX under the Hodgden name. Hodgden was very focused by their own admission on the hunting market and the enthusiast side of muzzleloading apart from the industry hunting seasons really wasn't a concern uh, for much of kind of later stage GoX under Hodgden here. I'm happy to report that Mr. Culling had a nice response to this question. Quote, absolutely. Our number one priority right now is filling orders and shipping powder, but we have plans in the very near future to be a more to be more active in the community. Mr. Culling and other representatives from GoX went on to describe some of the ideas that they had for GoX and Estes Energetics involvement in the muzzleloading community, but didn't want to divulge a whole lot until some plans solidified.
but they did mention that they would be launching a sponsorship application for organizations and clubs in the very near future. I pressed a little bit on a timeline here of seeing this increased level of community involvement from GoX. Mr. Culling said that they would hope to launch this in 2024, but it relied on a few more things lining up. Whew, that was a lot. Now, uh, I really, if you're still watching, I, I hope that you've found this informative. If there are more questions that you have uh, about GoX, uh, about Estes, uh, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me. I don't know if and when I'll have another opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with, with representatives from GoX. They are very busy. Uh, and so I, I do appreciate um, Carl and Anita from GoX sitting down and talking with me uh, as much as they did. It was a very busy weekend, I think, for everybody at the NMLRA. And uh, the fact that they took a few moments out of their day here to sit down and talk with me and answer some of my questions. And, and, um, and, you know, I, I pushed a little bit. I, I know it's kind of after the fact here trying to tell you guys, but, um, I really went in uh, to the conversation trying to have, uh, some of the questions that I've seen you asking and that you have asked of me and, and tried to pass those along. So I, I really do hope that it was informative. Uh, if there are more questions, please keep them coming and I will do my best to get them answered when I can. Um, like I said earlier, the story's not over yet, I don't think, uh, until we see distributors getting all their orders fulfilled here, hopefully by the end of the year, until we see old Einsford, uh, and then quite possibly, you know, the more community involvement. Um, this is gonna kind of still be a, a frontline story for us here at I Love Muzzleloading. I'm trying to track this stuff down. It's been a wild ride. Um, I'm really happy that we're here though, not just because I had the chance to talk with uh, representatives here from GoX, but just that we saw new GoX. Um, <laughs> here it is, you know. Um, a lot of folks said this never would happen. It would never be back. Um, you know, and like I, I always say, I shoot everything that burns in my muzzleloaders. Um, but it does feel good to have, uh, you know, American-made black powder back again. I mean, there you can see it. <laughs> it it's been a wild ride, uh, you know, going from getting a text from Eddie Davenport about this as I went to dinner with my boss. Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading and I have some news that I didn't really expect to share with you, but Hajin just announced in a press release like five minutes ago that they're going to be closing down the Louisiana GoX facility. You know, to, to, to be here now, to have New production GoX, I bought this with my own money, uh, not sponsored. None of this has been sponsored, never has been. Um, it's pretty cool, guys. Uh, so I hope that if you're a fan of GoX, uh, if you're a fan of muzzleloading in general, I hope that, you know, I hope that you're excited to see another avenue for this sport to continue, because uh, that's that's how I'm looking at it. So uh, as always, full article at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Uh, I've got some more of the write-up there, some more of the responses. The, the video here is already long enough as it is. I tried to get straight to the point for the video here. Um, but more information will be available at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.